Well, hello. This one is going to be a long video, so feel free to change your playback speed, or if long videos are your thing, then cheers. Okay, so we're going to start in the very front of the house, and here is where I planted all around this bird bath um, were salmon impression tulips. And these guys, I, I did post a little short a couple of months ago. These guys started coming up in January, bloomed, and then, of course, they got knocked out um, because of, you know, winter weather. So, anyway, it was a huge disappointment, and not all of them bloomed, um, but they did try to come up. It just, they really got stunted because of our unpredictable weather this year for winter. Um, it really was just so disappointing. So anyway, letting those die back and maybe they'll come back next year. Um, I don't think I will attempt tulips again um, unless I do them in containers. So here we are looking at the front of the house and I was pointing out there that I am going to be planting white Christmas caladiums all in those front flower beds and I am really excited for those. Um, the Florida Boys uh, Caladiums are coming soon. Okay, and here I am showing you I have four Japanese holly shrubs. Oh, and they're naturally cone shaped, you guys. And they will get about four to five feet tall and wide. So I'm looking forward to that. And where I'm going to be planting them, I'm going to mirror. Um, each side of the house. So I'm going to kind of frame each side of the house with these Japanese hollies and then I have on order, they're not here yet, but from Proven Winners I have their soft serve cypress trees and I think they're so cute because they look like the soft serve um, ice cream cones. So yeah, so I'm going to plant one of those um, on each side and two hollies on each side. So they're, they are going to look so Great, I think, if they will grow and do well here. On the front porch, I have a new bench that is coming. Well, actually, as I'm recording this, it is here, and my husband has put it together. So you'll be seeing in future video of me uh, refreshing our front porch. And here I'm showing you, I put down... <laughs> The little flower bed barriers and Ellie, our sweet doggy, kept pulling them out. So what I'm going to do is just pull the rest of them out up front here because it just looks so bad. And she's just going to keep getting them and she thinks it's fun and it's it's a game. Um, so anyway, I it was to keep the mulch in, but I'm going to pack the beds with those caladiums and I'll just blow off, sweep off any of the mulch that finds its way onto the sidewalk there. So now we're going to head over into um, the secret garden so we can see what's going on over here. Oh, and I'm going to stop and show you <laughs> these have to be, this barrier has to be pulled up here too because Ellie didn't do this. Um, the car backed over those, so... <laughs> Anyway, those up front there by the garage door are intact, so I will probably leave that there because it's kind of a lip, but anyway, trying to keep mulch in, uh, that was a big fail. So here we are, and I've had the delivery of compost and gardening soil and raised bed soil. Anyway, it is spring and super excited to start getting things cleaned up, but in this tour, you are seeing things not cleaned up, not ready. We're just doing a tour to see what's in bloom. And I'm pointing out here, you can see grass and weeds coming through the walkways. However, we have tried to um, go ahead and put out the uh, remover on those uh, to kill that back, but the temperatures are fluctuating so uh, rapidly these days that it's just not been very effective. So we're gonna just gonna have to wait till we get steady high 70 temps around here. <laughs> So back here, these are daffodils that keep blooming, um, and I did not plant these. These were here, and they're just so beautiful. I love that apricot color in these, and um, 
unfortunately, I never went out and picked any to put in a vase, and I regret that. I should have went out there and grabbed them because those right there just bloomed so well. All right, and now what I'm going to do is just do an overview of the secret garden and pretty much just go bed by bed inside here um, and let you know what I've planted in each one and what we can expect. Okay, so I'm going to start first in this bird bath bed and in the front there are daylilies that were already here and they're beautiful and they smell delightful when they start blooming. And now all around the bird bath, I put in a bubble blend allium mix and some austro alliums. So I'm excited to see what comes up here. I hope it's just absolutely beautiful. Now we're gonna turn around and go to what I call the gnome bed because there's my gnome. And then I'm pointing out, I did plant my mums over in here and something dug up both of them. So they're no longer with us. <laughs> Unfortunately, I put them back twice and something kept digging them up and I don't know what. So inside here in the gnome bed, I put in drumstick alliums and some blue alliums all in the open spaces where there's not monkey grass. So I'm excited to see um, how this ends up looking if they pop up. But I'm super excited over planting um, a lot of alliums out here in the secret garden because I think they will just be spectacular if they make it. And I did not plant any allium bulbs in that bed right there. And as I'm recording this, I honestly do not know why I didn't. So we're going to come over here to this uh, back bed here. And I call this the lollipop tree bed because of this little tree in here. But in this bed, I have planted uh, some white triumph tulips and then some finola double late tulips. And you'll see later on in the video, I do do an update on this bed. Um, my Finola double lates are supposed to be pink and they are not pink <laughs> and they're not double. So I was really disappointed. I also put some Austro alliums in this bed as well. And then I did plant some mini miniature pastel peonies, but I came out here to check on the bed during winter and something had dug them all up. I found several just laying on top of the ground. So I don't know, I was really sad over that. So I don't think I'm getting any miniature peonies in that bed. So here comes Miss Ellie uh, running up after, um, you know, walking the land. So yes, this is the bed where I did not plant any allium bulbs. So I don't know why, but I did plant, this is the bed where I, I bought a, a a mix that was called a eggnog tulip and daffodil mix um, and it just it did not do well here either and I am going to blame our temperatures just like up front with this the salmon um, impression tulips it got super warm in January so everything was confused they thought oh no is it time to come up <laughs> and anyway so this eggnog blend probably would have been beautiful if it would have bloomed um, under normal weather um, circumstances, but the daffodils are just pretty. Um, they're super pretty. The little white tulips that came in the mix, they're pretty too, but you know, they didn't get very tall either. Well, the ones that actually bloomed, um, and again, I'm just going to attribute that to weather, but I was really disappointed in my tulip and daffodil show this year. So <laughs> this is why I say, I don't think I'll spend the money to put them in beds anymore, but it may be for pots, but no more trying to buy them to um, put them out in my flower beds. So now we're going to head right over to this little bed, and I call this bed uh, the king frog bed. <laughs> Only because it has that little uh, garden ornament in it with the frog wearing the crown, and I call him my king frog. So here in the back of this little bed, I have planted some Casablanca oriental lilies. And you guys, I am so excited for those. I hope they come up. And up here in front, um, I have planted some purple sensation alliums. 
And you guys, I'm just going to go ahead and pop a photo in right here because um, as I'm recording this on April 10th, this voiceover, um, it has started, the alliums in this bed have started coming up. So I want to share that with you guys. Now the back of this bed, the middle bed that faces the driveway, this is the back of that bed. There is a, a daylily in this that's starting to come up. I have um, some purple shamrocks and some hostas that are coming back. I planted two baby hostas in here last year and they're coming back. And now we're going to focus on this bed here is where I planted those at last roses. And oh my gosh, you guys, um, I am, I was just delighted to see these guys perking up and coming back in these green leaves. Um, they're going to be spectacular. Now here's where I planted some alliums here, but I don't know. I'm in the front of these at last roses hee, that are coming back, but I might move, um, those three little allium plants because they just never bloomed really well last year. I don't know if it's because they were new. Now in this bed, I don't know if I ever said, but last year I planted nine frilly hookahs in that bed and all of them died. None of them did well. So disappointed. <laughs> um, I'm showing you there, we still have the dead trees. And I know I said in the past videos, these are coming down soon. Well, we did have it scheduled for them to come down and for whatever reason, uh, they did not show up. So hopefully April 12th, which is Tuesday, <laughs> uh, we have someone else coming and hopefully they show up and hopefully they really are gone. So dead trees going away soon. So in this bed with the big dead tree in it, um, I have planted in here some Austro Alliums and uh, Allium Bubble Blend mix in here as well. So hopefully those come up and I did put some lavender uh, mountain lilies in that bed as well. So we'll see. Uh, we just have some little sprigs. So now in this back bed, which is a mess, it's got Ellie's toys and broken garden ornaments that <laughs> I need to take out. I'm taking all the garden ornaments out of this bed. But in here I have um, hostas that I transplanted over here, hookahs. Uh, yeah, that birdcage keeps falling down. I am going to actually get that in the ground when I figure out where I want it. And then in this bed over here, I have transplanted more hostas. And then I picked up these three hostas uh, like three weeks ago, you guys, at Lowe's on clearance. Um, I think they're blue Canadian hostas. Yeah, Canadian blue hostas. And I just grabbed three of them that uh, looked pretty good and I think they're going to do great. And now I'm going to take you over here to the gazebo area because this is where I have placed my very first David Austin roses and I am so excited to have these roses because I really, really, really want them to love it here and fill out this gazebo area. So that is my hope and my dream. So the very first one I ordered, uh, Bare Root um, from David Austin is um, the Lady of the Lake, I do believe it's called. But I'm about to show you right here <laughs> since my recall on this isn't so great. Let's see. Yes, the Lady of the Lake. So, and when this was recorded on March 26th, um, so today is April 10th and I go check on them every day and they have just, they have so many leaves on them, you guys. So I will be doing an update, of course, but I just want to let you know they are working out pretty well. And then this one over here is uh, Claire Austin. Now, I don't know if she will be a climber to come up over on the gazebo. She may just want to be beautiful and spread out right there and that's fine too but I'm excited to have these guys and but I do hope they put on some growth because our oldest daughter is getting married here on the property on October 1st and we're just thrilled so 
I'm hoping we get some beauty from these amazing roses from David Austin. Okay, so this is the old fire pit that was here when we bought the house and we still need to dismantle it. And there's Miss Ellie over there in the background. So yes, we have a lot, a lot of work to do. So now we're headed over this way. This is that other part of that bed where I have those uh, Canadian blue hostas. And then that little bed just has some daylilies in it. So yeah, so we are going to head over now to this back patio area. And I've put together this, I found this arbor on Amazon for $25 and it's pretty solid, you guys. Now, I don't know how it's going to hold up to the wind because I don't have it in the ground yet, but <laughs> we'll see. But this is the bed in front of the back patio that I call it my hydrangea bed. This is where I put all the hydrangeas. So, and I'm going to be mo moving the two struggling Annabelle hydrangeas out of there and put them under the big tree in the front yard and see how they do. And in this bed, I also planted some more alliums. Um, let me get my paper. I put some ivory queen alliums in this bed and some allium chiberti. I think that's how you say it. I'm not real sure. I didn't have very many, like five of the allium chiberti and four of the ivory queens. I don't know. I can see where they, their, their leaves have popped up, but I've not seen any like blooming action. So we'll see how those work out. They came in late and they were supposed to go in up front with the tulips. But by the time I got them, because they were late, I'd already had the chicken wire put over the tulips um, in the bed around the bird bath up front. So I just popped them in this bed instead. So yeah, and those were some snowdrops that tried to come up and <laughs> they were already here. Not my planting, but they didn't survive because of the temperatures yet again. So here's another look at this uh, little cheap arbor I found on Amazon. What I want to do with it is put it right here to the entrance into the pool area. And I want to remove those shrubs and hopefully put them somewhere else if I don't tear up those shrubs taking them out. If I can get them out. <laughs> but my hope is to definitely put the arbor right there. I think that would be so beautiful. And I have some uh, blushing Susan climbing vine uh, that I want to put on it to climb up. I have the seeds, so just want to try to see if I could seed that and them go up that arbor. I think that would just be beautiful. Miss Ellie, cutest pup on the planet. Yes, and see here is the uh, another dead tree. We have 18 on the property, <laughs> 18 dead trees. There's quite a few, so that one tree has got to come down. So I am a little concerned about my hydrangea bed now that that tree is dead as well so gonna lose that shade so here's the back patio and again no cleanup all of these pots had pansies in them and I just simply quit watering them and so they just need to be cleaned out and I need to get those two strawberry pots ready for strawberries so yeah I do have some cleanup coming and I am hoping to post videos about that cleanup. But here is one of the Christmas presents from my husband. Uh, I just love this planter, you guys. She is just so lovely. And I put a Boston fern in there. And I think it just, <laughs> I think it looks great uh, to act as her hair. But she has such beautiful detail. I am so Thankful my husband um, gifted me that. And then I also have this wrought iron uh, bunny. And I just put succulents in this little planter uh, because it doesn't have a drainage hole in it. So we'll see how those guys do in that little planter. But yeah, the detail on this lady, oh, it's just beautiful. She like has rosettes in her hair and it's just, I don't know, she's just gorgeous. And I am just so happy to have her. She just adds a touch of elegance to this back patio. And Lord knows that the state it's in right now, it definitely needs her.
So, and then there's another Christmas present from my husband, and that's my new raised bed, and I'm so excited, and it just fit perfectly right there. I'm just tickled. I'm excited to have it, and I can't wait. I've started some seeds indoors, which I will take you in to see in just a little bit uh, to see how that's going. My first ever attempt to do it, so probably doing a lot of things wrong, but you know. Uh, try and learn. <laughs> Here in these pots, I have planted a Triumph Tulip mix and a Daffodil mix. That wasn't my order. They accidentally came to my address, so I was like, hmm, I really wasn't going to do like the loud yellows and reds, but I was like, you know what? I'm not turning down some tulips and daffodils. I mean, I'm not going to throw them away, so I just put them in those pots right there, and they were starting to bloom. And I'm so glad uh, that I did. And yeah, some maintenance here. There, there were pansies in this pot, but you can see I spray painted um, some of my old pots black because I just wanted to get some uniformity to all the pots I had back there. And I had different colors and purple and pink. <laughs> uh, but I have gotten some better spray paint, so hopefully it'll hold up a little bit better this season um, than it did last season. And I need to replace those two chairs. The squirrels have destroyed them. And I have, actually I say I need to replace them. I have new chairs already that my husband has put together. And right here in this pot, you guys, are, they were so pretty. These little hyacinths. And the pot got knocked over. and All the bulbs, everything came out of it. So in the winter, I just shoved them all in there. And I can't believe they actually even did this much blooming. But even with this little bit of blooming, the smell is amazing. It's beautiful. They smell delightful. Even though they barely bloomed out, I didn't even expect them to bloom. I just cleaned it all up. And now in this pot, I have a fairy trail hydrangea but there's a weed that started growing in this with these precious little flowers on it if you know what that is please let me know but I didn't pull it out because I thought that's the prettiest thing back here right now uh, besides the pansies coming back <laughs> um, it's this weed in this pot but you can see the fairy trail hydrangea is budding up wonderfully in this pot so I am ready for these guys um, same thing over here. I have another fairy trail hydrangea, and it's got some buds on it as well. So it's ready to start uh, growing for me. And same little weeds in this pot as well, um, along with a honeysuckle that I need to <laughs> dig out of this pot and find a spot for it where I want it to grow. And probably will be on the pool fence. Okay, so what was wonderful about this old house is on these little desk areas were already fluorescent bulbs that were installed. So they worked as like my grow light center. <laughs> so in this tray, I have some marigolds and chives that did not come up. Uh, peppers doing great and tomato plants. So I'm excited to get those out there in my raised bed. I also tried to do some canna lilies for the back lollipop tree bed. Um, you guys, these, I, and I put them in these like biodegradable trays. And I, I, I absolutely will not recommend them to anyone. I think these trays are the reason they did not do well. And I have some other seeds I tried in these as well. And that's why I say that. Um, I'm really disappointed because I really wanted um, those canna lilies. Uh, but see, I tried some Vinca in those trays and all of them, all of them perished. So I'm really upset over that. And then here's Miss Ellie. <laughs> Miss Ellie. <laughs> and we're going into my office. You can see Miss Ellie has... Um, gotten something all torn up and all over the floor but here's my most successful right here besides my peppers and tomatoes and marigolds are these uh, violet uh, petunias right here 
Oh, those are some Baker Creek seeds. And then back here, I did some fountain grass and monkey grass. Uh, the little fountain grass is coming up, doing well. I don't know if that Larape will. Um, now we have some Gomfrina, and I at least got some of each color, so I'm really tickled over those. Um, and then this uh, Salvia, I'm going to get some good plants out of these guys. Super, super stoked over this. And then the Impatience did the best. So I have Lavender, White, and Pink, and just look at these guys. <laughs> I'm just so happy over the success of the success of these now on the other side of my desk same thing fluorescent bulbs were installed underneath so it worked out perfect so I'm going to show you again these same biodegradable trays I did some celosia um no and you can see two came up but they eventually perished as I'm recording this they have already perished so I had to throw those out too do not recommend those at all not at all. Don't get those. <laughs> um, I'm all about the environment, but those are not good. So I did some Yarrow Pearl, which it did really well. And none of my apricot peony asters uh, germinated. So that's okay. I'm pretty pleased about, I mean, this is my first try to get seeds to germinate indoors ever. So I'm just excited. So here's some sweet Alyssa. And some pampas grass that I'm going to put out there to try to hide that pool equipment in the back. And butterfly bush. So those, I'm hoping the butterfly bushes come up because I do want to plant a row of them up front. I hope so. And then I have some strawberry seeds uh, that I forgot about in the freezer. So <laughs> I've started them a little late. And I don't know if those will work out. But I think I'm going to purchase some strawberry plants just to be safe. So I was headed back outdoors uh, to finish this tour and I discovered these hollyhocks I picked up at Lowe's when I got those blue Canadian hostas, so like three weeks ago. <laughs> I probably need to plant them if they're any good. Okay, so this is what I bought to uh, put in the raised bed because it didn't come with a liner. So I don't know, I could only find that stuff in a 50 foot row. I didn't need 50 feet, but that's what I have, and that's what will be lining my raised vegetable planter there. And so we'll see how uh, that does. I'm just so excited. So what I just what I did here was just cut that to fit, and once I get all the soil in it, I will trim off the excess around the edges. So yeah, this bed is by Best Choice Products. And it's really, really nice. I'm so excited to have it. And then I don't have to bend over for my first try. My husband cracked that screwing in that last one. And he super glued it. And then taped it with painter's tape while it dried. And then some of the tape stuck to it. So, <laughs> it's alright. My raised bed has character. <laughs> I just love it. I'm just super thankful to have it. And that he put it together. So yeah, there's after I cut it and, and put it in there. And once the soil is in, I'll just go around with some scissors and um, trim off the excess. So I think it'll look really, really nice. I have contemplated whether or not to paint this raised bed or not. Um, let me know, would you paint it? I kind of just like the natural look of the wood there. So what I'm doing here is just showing you doing this liner here. And then I... Start, I have started bringing out all my little seedling trays to start uh, acclimating them to the outside. So I think that's called hardening off. So I am learning, and this is my first learning experience. So I hope, I hope the guy, these guys that that are actually thriving indoors do well outdoors. So fingers crossed. Now we're going to head around to the, I'm showing you some, these trees are so dead, you guys, when we have wind or storms, they just break apart and fall to the ground. So I'm going to go around and show you this side of the house as well. So we have some more dead trees down over there. And then I have the daylilies are starting to come up on this side of the house, which 
they don't get a lot of sun down there. So I think I want to dig them up and move them, which I think I was going to do that uh, this past fall, and I never did. But right here, I had planted uh, my little white moms. I don't know, you guys. These things just look so brittle. I might be pulling those out. But I had moved my endless summer hydrangeas back here to see if they would do well. And I planted some bare root daylilies. And I don't know, all of these guys look like goners. So <laughs> I want to move those um, established orange daylilies that are up there on that side bed back here and see how they do. But yeah, I, I think those are all goners. I don't know, might be surprised the, the next time I take you guys around. So I am really, really looking forward to this season. Um, and again, we are both tickled and really looking forward to our daughter's wedding in October. I came back here and I picked up those two pots because I was like, I really need to get these off the ground so they could get more sun. And I put them on those two columns, you guys, and it gave me an idea. I really like the way that looks. Maybe you could get some pots to put on all of these columns and fill them with, with some kind of flowers or greenery. Um, I think that would look really good. And maybe a low bow like that right there on all of the columns. What do you think? I did, um, as I'm recording this, I did pick up two of them. Uh, to put where those black pots are, um, just to see, just to test. But uh, I wanted to show you guys, it wouldn't be fair of me if I did not put in a clip of these little pots in bloom. So we're going to go from March 26th to April Fool's. So here they are, so beautiful and bloomed out. And they just look really, really good. And again, I am so happy that I decided to just put those misdirected tulips and daffodils into pots instead of discarding them. What beautiful little pots they were. And now to end this video, we're going to go to April 6th and I'm going to show you this back. The lollipop tree bed where my Fiona, what are they called again? Vanola double late tulips, which they're supposed to be blush pink. Um, they're not, they're yellow. <laughs> they're not doubles either. They're just yellow tulips. And <laughs> I'm so sad. It is not that I do not like yellow. I love yellow. But I just wanted this bed to be like soft white pinks and purples. And anyway, it did not work out that way. See, Ellie was disappointed too. See, she had to walk off. <laughs> now I just want to show you, uh, this is also... April 6th, the uh, red buds are coming in to bloom right here. And then this glorious dogwood that's up front. It's just, it gives the best spring show. I loved it last year and truly love it this year. It's just beautiful. Now, it does need to be trimmed up just a bit. Um, the hangover into the front yard there over the walkway. But I think we're keeping it. It really needs to go because it's too close to the house, but I absolutely love it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope wherever you are, you're having the most wonderful day. Uh, thank you so much for watching and adding color to my world.